Hey everyone, yesterday I did a live stream build of an Opulo pick and place machine. It's called the Lumen PNP and it's open source and designed by Opulo. I got to meet Stephen Hawes and the Opulo gang twice this year, and I finally got my hands on one of these machines myself. The video yesterday was over two hours long, so I wanted to make a quick recap video to have a summary as well as my opinions about the whole build. I started by doing an unboxing to see what came with the kit. And then I immediately made my first mistake by following the wrong guide online. Partway through, some of the Opulo team joined into the stream and actually pointed out that I was using the wrong guide, so I got that fixed right away. I struggled with a few things that I probably shouldn't have, such as these T-nuts trying to get them to lock in place just right. If you're not familiar with these, you want to make sure that the end of them is kind of loose so that way they can fit inside of the extrusion, and then as you start to tighten it, it should rotate 90 degrees into place and then lock into the bar. After the assembly is done, I was left with about three USB cables and a power connector, and I was able to plug it all in and power the machine up. So now that I've had a night to collect my thoughts, here's my opinions on the whole build. First of all, the guide was extremely well written. There were a ton of pictures and every single part was labeled properly. I built a lot of 3D printers, some of which are from scratch and some are from pre-built kits, and the instructions are really what make the world of difference between a good build and a difficult build. In terms of the actual assembly, I got the pre-assembled kit and all of the difficult stuff came pre-assembled, so I didn't have to touch that. Basically, I just kind of took the four ends of the frame, stuck them together, and put the bar across that actually moves side to side. I'm extremely happy that I didn't have to deal with any of the belt things. I've had to deal with belts when I'm building my own printers and it's really easy to mess up, so I'm glad that came done for me. The wiring was pretty straightforward. All of the harnesses were done, so I didn't have to do any crimping myself. And on top of that, all of the wires were labeled, so I didn't have to guess about where to plug something in. And also, just about everything on this was 3D printed. There's a lot of things that I wouldn't even expect, like the spacing that goes in between the V-slot wheels, and even the cable organization. Everything being 3D printed is probably the part that I'm most excited about, because that means that if I don't like something, I can change the model myself and improve it. And that's the part that makes this whole machine pretty hackable. I still don't have a running demo of this, because I still need to do the software and calibration, and I'm going to cover that in a different video. I'll split that off into a second video, and it's most likely not going to be as exciting to watch me do a lot of coding and calibration. But if you're interested, you can always tune in. Before I go, I do want to say a special thank you to my first ever Patreon subscribers. I don't know how you guys found my page because I haven't announced it yet, but I really appreciate you. I really don't like the idea of putting educational content behind some sort of a paywall, so people like you are what make it possible for me to post this to YouTube for free. So thank you from me and for everybody that's watching this video for free because of you. See ya.